it's been a while. Um, for those of you who are new, and I think there are a, a chunk of you who are new because the wonderful Jen Campbell um, shouted out my channel recently, so I think there's a bunch of new people here. So hello, hi if you're new, and hello, hi if you're just um, old and wondering where the hell I've been for a little while. Um, I haven't recorded a video in about six weeks, which in the the grand scheme of things is not that long, but it was an unplanned, accidental YouTube hiatus. Um, so I, as many of you will know, film my videos on, on my phone and um, because I am, you know, small and a baby and um, <laughs> I don't have enough followers to justify like uh, fancy camera equipment. I film on my phone and about six weeks ago, I I didn't just drop my phone on the floor. I like held it in my hand like this screen down and watched my hand as it opened and dropped my phone screen down onto the road. Um, just... A fun little a fun little thing sometimes my brain does these things where it's just like what would happen if that that happened what happened is my phone got completely smashed up um was unusable and therefore i didn't technically have the means of creating any content and as that was happening i got quite anxious about what i was going to do to create content and then I felt like I internalised a lot of pressure that no one had put on me at all. Um, pressure entirely of my own making to create content. And I just, I was having like not a very fun mental health time. So I just thought, you know what? Let's not create any content for a little bit. And uh, give, give myself some distance remove the pressure that didn't exist and I had made up, but the pressure nonetheless, um, and come back as and when I feel able to do so comfortably, happily, and with minimal stress. And that has taken six weeks, and that's fine. Um, so hello, hi, it's, it's lovely to be back. Um, I thought a good reintroduction, uh, a reintroduction video, particularly given the fact that there are a, a bunch of new people here, would be to do the quarterly crisis book tag, um, which I can't remember who the originator of was, but I got it from Simon Savage at Savage Reads, who got it from Lauren in the Books at Lauren in the Books. Um, so I'll link both of their channels um, down below and I'll also pop the questions down in. So I thought, yeah, it would be good to do the... Sorry, I kicked you. Um, it would be good to do the quarterly crisis tag partly because i i felt like i did have a quarterly crisis um which is fun and technically i am going to be talking to you about books from that i've read up until now i'm filming this um a couple of days before it's going up on my channel so right at the back end of february um so that's technically a third of the year and not a quarter but like Honestly, if you're seeking perfection, this is not the channel for you. So, um, yeah, we're going to do the quarterly crisis tag and we'll just we'll just see uh, see how we get on. So the first question is a simple one. It's how many books have you read this year? Um, I've read 51 books this year um, and I'm conscious that like in the world of booktube, there's a real sliding scale. And for some people that might seem like not that many books and for some people that might seem like fucking loads of books um it's more books than i have read historically at this point in the year previously um and more than i intended to read um but to be honest a, a big chunk of those have been books that i've read in march and april while i've not been creating content um while while i wasn't making videos, I thought it would be a good time to really, really make a dent in um, the Euros reading challenge that um, that I'm doing, where I read a book from all of the countries that are participating in this year's Euros competition, the football competition. So much of that um, reading has unfortunately just been like 
absolutely fine like really middling stuff and that's part of why I didn't come back sooner on my channel was just that I wasn't super inspired by the books that I was reading to create content like sometimes I'm reading a book and I think oh my god I want to talk to people about this book and I just haven't had that many of those in the last two months um but yeah so 51 books but in the last couple of months it's been a bit more quantity over quality which uh, we'll chat about later but I, th I think is something that I would like to uh, flip on its head in the next few months. Uh, the second question is have you found any new favourites and if you haven't what was your favourite that wasn't quite a five star? Now I don't star rate my books because um, I find <laughs> I find that I am too inconsistent with how I apply that a star rating. So I will give a book like three stars and then come back to it and be like, that's not three stars, that's definitely four stars. And I just personally have zero consistency about how I apply it. So therefore my star ratings become quite um, meaningless quite quickly. That's not to say that other people's star ratings are meaningless. That's just like, I know that I... I am not very rigorous um, or consistent in how I in how I rate books. So I don't have any five star officially, but I have definitely got some books that I think will be favourites, ones that I think are really going to stay with me. And actually a number of books that I have read um, as part of different reading blogs here. So where that has been the case, I'll mention those blogs um, and link them in description box down below so um in no particular order i think actually maybe this is in order that i read them in so maps of our spectacular bodies by maddie mortimer um i absolutely loved this book really interesting really experimental portrayal of um grief and parenthood i thought it was fantastic and i think about that book quite a lot and that was I think maybe the second or third book that I read this year and it is still regularly cropping up in my head. I also read Poor Things by Alistair Gray, which I think some of you have seen um, the, the video because that is one of the things that Jen mentioned in her video. So if you're new, you might have already seen the, the video where I read Poor Things, but I loved that book. Um, it's the first Alistair Gray book that I read. Um, if you can't be bothered to go and watch my video, um, where I talk about that adaptation in detail. Just know that the book is fantastic and the film separate to the book is fine, but it ain't, it ain't got a patch on the, it ain't got a patch on the book. So if you saw the film and liked it, oh my God, read the book. Then um, another, another one that I've read and loved, actually um, to return the favor, I read this book because of Jen Campbell because um, it's her Patreon book club pick for um, the spring. And that is The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber. This is a sort of literary speculative fiction book. From what I've read of Michelle Faber so far, or like read around him, because actually this is the only full length book of his that I've read, but I know quite a lot about other titles of his. I think he is like really a bit of a like, uh, genre chameleon in terms of how he writes but this is a book about a man who goes to a human colony on a um another planet and his job is to spread christianity spread the word of god to aliens and it was fascinating really interesting and i absolutely loved it really really beautifully written as well and that sounds like quite high concept but I really thought the relationships and the human side of the book the um relationship that he has with his wife who is back home the relationship that he has with his own faith and with other characters I thought was just like so interesting um another one that I have read and loved is I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman um this is a book that's been doing the rounds it's not a recent publication it was kind of a bit of a forgotten classic I think that got a reprint by Vintage I think and um this is a told from the perspective of a, a young woman who is being kept in a cage underground with a load of other women 
and they are being guarded by men and the women have absolutely no idea why or how they got there. Um, I talk about this, I think, in my February impatient reading vlog. Oh, and Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies was in my January one. And yeah, I thought this was brilliant. I think lots of people have been um, really raving about, about that one and rightly so, I absolutely loved it. And it's another one that I think has just returned to me a lot and I think is a book that I'll definitely reread at some point. Um, which is saying a lot because I'm not a massive rereader, really. Beyond like um, my comfort books from being like a kid, I don't I don't reread books very often, but I think I would reread that one. So um, yeah, there's that. And the final one that I'd maybe put in this category is another classic actually. I read in my March Impatient Reading vlog, right before I fell off the face of the earth, I read A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. And I don't think, I haven't rechecked in with that video, but I don't think I necessarily said that that was my favorite of the four books I read in that video, but this book has like grown on me so much. Like the more distance I've had from it, the more I loved it and um, and really, really liked it. It's another book actually that is dealing with, with grief. Um, and I just thought it was brilliant. So yeah, so five books, but none of them are uh, like recent releases. I, none of them are 2024 releases. <laughs> Some of them aren't even from, you know, this century. Never mind this. <laughs> never mind this year, never mind this decade. So um, yeah, I, I've i read some great stuff, but I am generally a person who spends more of their time uh, delving into the backlists than um, necessarily reading like stuff that has just come out. So uh, yeah. Oh, and um, I also have been enjoying my poetry reading uh, quite a lot this year. And I really, really loved Molly Naylor's collection, Whatever You've Got, um, which my friend Farmer bought for me and uh, I absolutely loved. And in our video, right at the end of the book to screen adaptation video that I did for All the Light We Cannot See, Farmer does a dramatic reading of one of Molly Naylor's poems, so um, I will link that down below as well. Um, so yeah, so great, great books, um, but nothing from the last sort of month or so, sadly. Um, the next question is any one star books? So similarly to um, similarly to the five star thing. I don't one star books either, but I have definitely had books that I have not enjoyed. I've got much better over the years at DNFing books and just putting them to one side. And I'm not gonna mention here any books that I've I've DNF'd. I haven't DNF'd tons this year, I think maybe five books. And that's been normally pretty quickly, just because I can tell from like the writing style. Um, that I wouldn't get on with it and sometimes I DNF an audiobook if I decide quite quickly that it's just like a book that I'm going to have trouble following as an audiobook and would prefer to read like an ebook or a, a print copy of. But the but a book that I have finished and almost like wish I hadn't was sadly The Engineer of Human Souls by Joseph uh, Skavarecki. Now this is one of the books that I read for the Euros challenge. Um, it's a Czech book. Um, and it's one that has been on my radar for years and years because I think it was in some like compendium of like European, like classic European literature. Um, like it's a modern, it's a modern classic, but it's very highly respected and revered and it's really long and I just didn't like it. And I forced myself to finish it. I picked it up from a charity shop like years and years ago. And it's just been sat languishing on my shelf. And I sort of, I sort of wish I'd just left it there, if I'm honest. Um, it just wasn't for me. It just wasn't for me. Uh, it's about a Czech exile um, who's like fled communism in um, what was Czechoslovakia. Um, but it's sort of him, so he's now a literature professor in Canada and he's reflecting on his life um, that he's led up to that point, but it's very fragmented. Um, parts of his um, life in his village were under Nazi occupation and then later under the influence of the USSR. And 
there were all sorts of political things going on, but that just felt really tangled. And I'm sure if you're very, very proficient and have a really strong understanding of that sort of geopolitical relationship um, or know just a lot of Czech history, then you might have got more from the book than I did. But it also just was a bit of a product of its time in terms of descriptions, um, depictions rather, of women were pretty superficial um, and I, I rolled my eyes quite a lot and definitely I forced myself to finish that book. And if I hadn't have been reading it for this Euros challenge, I definitely would have DNF'd it and I still think I should have DNF'd it and just picked up a Kafka book. But it's done now. It's done now. I have read it. I did not enjoy it. So the next one is what genre you've read the most of. Um, this is not surprising at all. Uh, it's literary fiction. It's always literary fiction is uh, by far the biggest genre that I read although interestingly compared to previous years like there's a lot more fantasy um and sci-fi creeping up the the ranks of of genre in my um in my reading and also way more poetry which I'm really pleased about because poetry was something that I I said at the start of this year that I wanted to to read more of and I have been doing that and I've been really enjoying that so um yeah but literary always literary. And number five is a book that surprised you and I really am stumped by this question. I don't, I don't, I, there are books that have disappointed me but I don't, I don't want to have this be a really negative <laughs> video. Um, so I don't think there is anything that's that's necessarily surprised me. I think maybe what surprised me a bit more, um, linked to what I said in the previous question, is maybe more trends in my reading. So I have been surprised by how much um, I've been enjoying reading a bit more fantasy and science fiction, which is a genre that historically I haven't um, really gravitated towards. Although there are some fantasy series that I have read or I'm part way through I'm still halfway through the Wheel of Time um, I haven't read any Wheel of Time books this year but um, once this Europe project is done I think I am going to continue with that series because I was enjoying it although there's another man who can't write a woman um, but uh, yeah I have been enjoying reading more of that um, I've also been surprised slash disappointed by how Again, this is like a trend, but when I was doing the Euros, but part of the reason I think I've had like not a brilliant time with my Euros reading is not because there aren't brilliant books and innovative books and cool books and books that would be books that I would really like written by authors from these countries. Um, it's that they don't tend to make it onto subscri subscription services that I use like Everand um, and my libraries don't tend to stock them. And I had said at the start of doing this challenge, I don't want this entire video to be about this challenge, so I'm trying to keep it brief, but I had said that I didn't want to go and buy like 24 brand new books um, for the sake of this challenge. I was gonna read from my shelves where I already owned books from those countries, or I was going to use what was available at the library and what was available on Everand because I already had an Everand subscription. And sadly, I found it really limited. There's stuff for those countries, but they weren't necessarily the titles that I particularly was drawn to. I found some really, really cool kind of um, quirky sounding queer stories, but Unfortunately, my libraries just weren't stocking them and they don't seem to have found their way onto Everand yet. So that has been sort of useful to see how little actually makes it onto some of those ways of accessing um, more kind of, I guess, non-classic. Most of the European literature I have managed to find that is like translated from the original language of that country almost all of it has been in some way about World War One or World War Two. Almost all of it. Um, and I don't believe that that is the only literature that is being written. I don't know if it's that the books aren't being translated into English or if it's that they're just not being picked up by libraries because maybe there's not a demand. Um, so it makes me think maybe I do need to like dig out more of them and start like a bit of a campaign to get more people wanting to 
read some of the stuff that isn't about that. Not that there's anything wrong with books that are about that, but I've had like such a warry time in March and April. <laughs> it has been a lot. Um, but yeah, so, hmm, hmm. Not a surprising book, but just um, some some surprising things that I've noticed about my reading, I guess. Then question six, what is a book that came out in 2023 that you haven't read yet, but still want to read? Now, I never know with this question, should that be 2024? And it's just not been updated, or should that be 2023? Either way, um, yeah, there'll be loads, because as I said, I don't tend to partly because I'm I'm trying to curb my book buying habits a little bit um uh I don't have as many books um that have just been published from 2024 but yeah there's there's stuff from 2023 that that I still haven't got to as I said I tend to lurk in the backlists a little bit and I I'm, I'm trying to read more um backlist stuff from authors that I've really liked in the past so there will be because I've been doing a chunk of that, loads of books that came out last year and in the early part of this year that, that I haven't read yet. Um, some of the ones on the Women's Prize, for example, um, I'm really interested in reading Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. Um, I'm also interested in, oh, what was the other one that sounded really great? And Then She Fell, which I think is like a riff on Alice in Wonderland. I can't remember if that came out in 2023 or 2024, but um, yeah, there's loads too too many to too many to mention here that's my dog coughing in the background um so question seven one goal that you are succeeding in okay so before I took my unplanned hiatus I was enjoying so much my impatient reading vlog experience um, so one of the intentions that I set for the year, I hadn't really set tons of goals, but I did want to get more impatient about my reading. So what I had found last year, which was my first full year of having a booktube channel, I was finding that I was catering my reading towards what I thought might make good content or like putting off reading some books because in my head I was going to read that book with that book with that book in a vlog in the future. Are you okay? Are you okay? He just doesn't like it when I'm talking not to him, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, I hadn't, yeah, I was putting stuff, I was putting off reading stuff and I was worrying loads about having like themed reading vlogs. Um, whereas this year, other than in April, at the, on the first of every month, I sat down, I pulled four books off of my unread shelf, which is largely these shelves here, except for the ones at the bottom. Um, and they were just not linked by anything specific. They were just the four books that I was excited to read that month. And then I read them. And most of the books that have been like more towards the top end of what I've read this year, the books that I've really enjoyed, have been books that I have read in in those vlogs. So if if you feel like I've been a bit of like a Debbie Downer in this <laughs> video, and you wanna hear me talk about books that I really liked, go watch like the January, February or March Impatient Reading Vlogs, because I, I mostly really loved those books. So um, yeah, that, that I feel like I've been doing really well. And I think the reason my March and April reading has felt comparatively slumpy is because I wasn't doing that. So it's it's May in two days and I'm so excited to pull four books off my shelf to start a new vlog for May. And it's really, re really been working. I think that is how I need to read in the future. I think I can't get too caught up in what um, plans I might have in advance for reading. I actually hate myself a little bit for doing this Euros challenge because I just, I thought it was a cool idea and I am glad I've done it, mostly done it, I haven't finished it yet, um, and I have read some cool stuff for part of that, but most of the books that I've really enjoyed were books that were already on my TBR. So there's a lesson there, isn't there? There's just a lesson there. Um, some people I think really like having like lots of little reading projects and they get a lot of joy out of reading like that. I think I've just learned that like I am not that reader and that is that is really fine. So then one goal that I need to focus on, um, basically all of the ones that weren't reading impatiently, <laughs> um, but definitely one was 
um, I mentioned at the start of this video that I've read more than I thought I would and more than I have in previous years at this point. And that is like in direct contradiction of what I wanted to do this year. I actually wanted to read a little bit less because there were other things that I wanted to do with my time and potentially also on this channel. Um, one of them being write. Um, I'm not like a writer by any stretch of the imagination, but I do really enjoy writing. I really enjoy writing poetry. Um, and I hadn't, um, I haven't found time to do that because my default is always to pick up a book if I find myself at a loose end. Um, so I would like to read less going into the next few, few months. Um, we're going to do quality, not quantity, I think. But I'm actually um, in the middle of recording um, a vlog, which will be up, not next week, the week after, um, where I'm doing like a writing vlog over the course of a week. So rather than a reading vlog, I'm doing a writing vlog, which is just me attempting to hold myself to account and find time in a normal working week to sit and do a little bit of writing. So... Um, if that sounds interesting, that'll be coming in a, in a couple of weeks. So there's that. And the other big one was um, one that I carried over from last year, which was that I um, wanted to get better at Spanish with a view to reading a book in Spanish before the end of the year. And um, when I tell you that I have not opened the Duolingo app one single time this year, I I have done no Spanish. My Spanish, I assume, has regressed since I made that goal. Um, I do want to, I do, I do want to get back at it. I want to get better at it. But oh man, I have just, I have just not. Um, my Duolingo, I didn't even know that the little Duolingo bird could look this sad in an icon. But oh my God, he is depressed. He's real depressed that I have not clicked on him in many months so that is something that I would like to get to sooner rather than later so that's those are the questions just just those just those eight this has been relatively short and sweet for me I'm normally ramble on much longer than this but um it's been nice to finally get get back chatting to you I would love to know the answers to those questions for for you in the comments down below or just maybe let me know roughly how your reading is going and uh, particularly if you're new come say hi let me know what's the best book that that you've read this year um and yeah let's have a little chat in the comments down below the next time you will see me i will do a march and april combined reading wrap up for next week that will be next week's video that's probably going to be long because <laughs> i've read 30 books in March and April. Um, so I, I, even if I only speak for two minutes, that's gonna be an hour. Um, and if you know me, you know I won't be able to just talk for two minutes per book. So that's gonna be a long one. Mind you, some of these books, pff, I just don't have that much to say. And some of them, I can't really remember. So maybe it will be quicker than I thought. Uh, but yeah, do say hi in a comment down below. Um, click that little like button if you can, because I think the algorithm is gonna really punish me for having taken so much time off. So uh, if you could give it a little thumbs up and um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, that would be lovely. And um, thanks gang, see you soon.